So before continuing with um, with functional programming, uh, let me show you one thing that I forgot before and it was uh, make evident from a question during the break. Uh, this is one of the last run of the of the exercise that we did, and this you see the date. You see the date is should be it's the seven of June. Yes, uh, here the seven of June, twenty twenty two. So you see two things. First, in the in the long version, you see the sixth of June, not the seven. Mm? Uh, that because that time is converted in UTC and we are UTC plus two in this moment so it go back to the day before 10 p.m. because we didn't specify the time when we set up the date so it's midnight minus two hours so here you see the 6th of June and remember this is an internal representation of the JS and then and this is one thing to notice. The other thing is notice is again still an internal representation. Notice the month here. It's five, not six. So it's May, not June. Uh, that's happened because internally, um, and don't ask me why, because I didn't create that. Uh, f the month starts from zero. So January is actually zero. Uh, and so June is five. And this is just for the month, not for the day or for the year. Well, the year probably we start from zero as well, but not for the day. Hmm? Um, again, this is an internal representation. Hmm? So when you use the methods of the AJS, it is able to, to understand that this is June and to react in the, in the proper way for the June month. Mm? But here, if you see the, the, the print here of the representation, if you see five and you wrote six, it's not a, an error, it's, it's just because it started from zero. Mm? So just to, to highlight this. Okay. So functional methods. For each, for each is a way for iterating uh, on something that is iterable, uh, like an array. And you see the syntax here is, for instance, the array dot for each, and then a callback. And this is a synchronous callback. So it again, it means you you should you probably knows, but it means that this is needs to be ended, the execution of this, before doing the console.log. Mm? Uh, and then it's a uh, for each. Mm? So for each, uh, in this case, what do we have? In this case, we have an array made of the letters of hello world. So each position in an array has one letter. Mm? Because that is a string unpacked in an array. Mm? And so for Iterating on this array for each element of this array that we called letter, but it's just an element of the array, we take the letter, put it in uppercase, and add it to the uppercase variable, string concatenation. And so at the end, uppercase as the variable will contain the Hello world, written all capital letters. Iterating is it, a cycle, basically. So just written in a different way. You need to pass the parameter, and the parameter is the element of the current iteration on the array, in this case. Hmm? Uh, so actually, uh, the callback have three parameters. So in the example before, we just have one parameter that is the current value, letter, the current value in the cycle. Uh, we can have ad other two parameters, index, uh, that is also the index of the current element, 
and also uh, array that is the array for which the for each is called on just in case you need to maybe in, in the body of the for each also have the array to do some kind of operation mm. like okay it's the letter but I would like to do this only for the even letter and not for the odd letters odd positioning mm. uh, so you need also the index and uh, array if you need to to also have access in some way to the entire array so letters in our case mm. uh, for each returns undefined mm. so if you put a variable here in front of letters that variables will be undefined mm. because it's, mm, it's it's just iterating uh, mm, not modifying the letters array but just doing some operation for each element of that array mm. um, and there is no way to stop or break for each the only way is to throw an exception so there is a, a brutal way to stop a for each um, because it's not for each letter or for the first five letters is for letters for each letter and for each is functional so it doesn't mutate the array on which it's called so letters is not touched by for each however the callback could do that again it's not pure functional if you do that but if you want in the for each you can manipulate the array with all the bad consequence that you may have here or in any other programming language when you are modifying an array for which you are iterating on but you, you can it's technically possible and this is for each so a cycle and we will maybe try to uh, have um, to to, re to to use it in at a certain point uh, but cycling then there is every every always apply to arrays uh, test whether all the element in the array satisfy a condition provided by the callback hmm? and the callback has the same three element arguments of for each so the single element the current value that is mandatory optionally the index and optionally the array on which this is applied it returns a boolean so not undefined is actually returned true or false um, and it executed the callback once for each element present in the array until it finds one element that doesn't satisfy the condition mm. it's a test verify whether all elements satisfy condition so if all elements satisfy condition it's true otherwise it's false if just one does not satisfy the condition it's false mm. uh, and so as soon as found this element it immediately returns false it doesn't continue mm. so if the first element of the array doesn't satisfy the condition return false false it doesn't even go ahead because that is for testing every element that every element satisfy a condition so soon one doesn't satisfy the condition no it doesn't make sense to continue hmm? and so here you see an example you have an array with one two three four five and you say on the array dot every hmm, where current value here is called x and the condition is x minor than 10 so I'm checking whether in this array all the elements are less than 10 because maybe in the next step I would like to do some operation or maybe I want to check if some of them is minor than 10 um, if every er, or at least one is minor is greater than 10 and then say no there is something wrong in this data mm? so it could be useful for various reasons uh, so in this case that operation will give you true because actually one to five is minor than ten um, but you can also here check hmm, uh, if the values are even or not hmm? so for every element all the elements are even so get the current elements um, 
and see if they are even. Hmm? So with the, the tri triple equals to zero, and so if it's even, okay, continue and check the next one. And if it's even, okay, continue to check the next one. As soon as one is not even, return false. So in this case, we'll return immediately false because one is the first element is not even. So that will be extremely quick because start and then it's immediate with this array. So testing. So for each cycling, uh, every testing, some testing. Yes. Yes. It's not chainable with any of these because this will give you a true. Um, uh, um, sum. Sum is similar to every. Uh, but instead of testing if every element satisfies condition, test where there is at least one that satisfies the condition. And then again, return a Boolean if there is at least one element that satisfies the condition. Mm -hmm. And then it's, it works uh, in uh, like every mm -hmm. uh, for, the, uh, for the other. So it's a, a parameters, arguments, and how it checks, etc. The difference is that as soon as find one element that satisfy the condition, just return. Hmm? Because here, just say one. I need one. I don't care if there is two, three, five, eleven. Just as soon as one element says satisfy the condition, I'm satisfied, and some will return true. Hmm? And so here you can have an example. Sum for the even numbers. Again, same syntax as before with sum instead of every returns true mm. because you have one element at least that is even so maybe not in the first iteration but in second iteration it will find an element and it will stop it there mm. uh, and, and these are for testing and then there are other elements that iterate on array but do some other operation um, so every and some are not probably, in, well, in practice, we, they, we, they are used, but in, in our case, we will not use a lot ever in some because it's just for testing. So it could be useful to test something, but uh, it's not uh, a very common operation uh, for us to testing whether all the elements in an array satisfy condition or not, or at least one element in an array satisfy condition. Uh, filters will be a little bit more used, but also map. Hmm? So map, what does map? Map. Uh, as written here, passes each element of the array, so again, cycling on the array, uh, on which is invoked to the function you specify and returns a new array containing the values returned by the callback. Mm -hmm. uh, so probably e it's, it's easier to see here. Mm -hmm. You have a bar, uh, an array, one, two, three. And you say one, two, three, dot map, and for each element of map of, of the array, I'm going to do this operation. So for each element of the array, I want a new array that is made by the element multiplied by itself. Hmm? So what map is doing is taking one and say, okay, the results is a, in a new array will be one multiplied one that will give one, okay, you are not sleeping yet. Um, then next iteration, two. Two multiply two and it will give four. And then three multiply three and it will nine. And it will return a new array here that will contain the results of the operation. So a new array created starting from the original one with the same length, but with a content that depends on the body of the callback. So in this case is a multiplication of the same array of the elements for itself. And here you see another example that is similar to the one we, we had with for each. So same results, we have hello world, put it hello words in an array, 
each letter in the um, uh, in, in a position in an array and then with map we say for each letter put the letter uppercase mm? and then return a new array that has identically to the original array but just with the letter uppercase and so if we want the full sentence then we can join um, the, the array together in a string mm? so map perform operation on the arrays without changing the array returning a new array and the operation is the one that you specified iterating one value at a time on the array uh, yeah the join here the join put together uh, the array in a string uh, with um, um, uh, sp you can specify how to join the array so here you specify you don't specify you say okay just put them together but you can say Okay, everything that's an array, I would like to create a string with everything in an array, in which elements in the array is separated by a uh, minus sign. The elements for the joining of the array. Uh, filter, filter, we already have uh, spoken about filter. Creates a new array with all elements that pass the test implemented in the function. And again, the callback returns either true or false and if no elements pass the test you get a empty array as a result because you you filter for something that's not there so you get no results hmm? um, so here hmm, with this array and you're filtering for x minor than three so you will get a, a new array that has only the element two and one because three four and five are bigger than three uh, and you can also do things more complex and as you see filter like sum like for each etc could have an additional argument that is the index mm, if you just need the number of the index of the array not just the elements and so it's it's changing the index automatically mm. so it change the start from the first element and the first index and then in the next execution is the second element and the second index and so on uh, and then there is a reduce. Um, so this is where more or less e simple mm, for each iterate, uh, every test, if everything has a value, the same value, respect the same condition. Some check if there is at least one element that respects satisfy condition. Uh, filter, mm, you know, filter, map, perform, creates a new array starting from the original one with the same length and with the content that is depending from the, the kind of operation that you uh, you want to, to perform in the array, like you know, take, taking only the, uh, um, the, the the multiplying an element for itself, like in the example before, uh, or putting the elements uh, uppercase hmm? in an element in one line. You can clearly do all of these things in in other ways hmm? with cycle, with cycle, etc. But uh, this is one line operation. Uh, that will give you the, the results or a very few lines operation will give you the results and then there is the redus the redus it's a little bit more complex uh, also in the terminology actually more on the terminology than not on the function reduce uh, combines the element of an array using the specified function to give you one value so while the others will give you true or false if there is a condition or nothing because it's return something like for each or a new array this will give you one value um, and that value is made up from the combination of the elements in array in the array in some way that you can specify uh, and it takes two arguments there is the callback that is the function that does the reduction combination mm? so reduce why it's called the reduce because you get more than one value and reduce them in one combining them in some way mm? so that's why it's called the reduce um, so there is the function there is in the callback you have the current value you have the index you have the array as the 
as the other operator. And here you can also have another parameter after the callback that is the optional initial value to pass to the function. So the function can have a seed, an initial value to perform this reduction combination operator. And if it's not specified, it just uses the first element of the array. If it's specified, it uses the specified element. And here mm. we can see uh, an example that also explains what is written here, there. Uh, so reduce the callback reduce as two, mm, so this is the callback, as two variable, two, two parameters. One is called accumulator, and the, one, the other one is called is the current value, mm, the element we had before. Uh, and then this one, this zero here, is the initial value. Mm. So what does this reduce? This reduce on this array, five to one, uh, will perform accumulator plus current value. Mm. What does mean? Means that, mm, so remember here, initial value is specified, is not specified, is the first element. So here it specifies we're going to use zero. Uh, mm, what it does here? Perform this operation, yeah. in order well we in this case we don't care in this specific case yes it iterates on the array so the first element the, the first current value will be five and the four and the three like like the others but here the difference is that it performed this operation so here, the result of this reduce is 15. This reduce is going to do the sum of all the values. So it's doing 0, because it's the initial value, plus 5. And the result is 5. And we'll put this 5 in the accumulator. And then we, next iteration, it will be 5 plus 4, because 4 is the second element. And the result will be 9. And 9 will be put in the accumulator. And then it will be 9 plus 3. That is 12, and 12 will be put in the accumulator mm, until the end of the function mm, or the array. Mm. So it will be 12 plus 2, then we put in the accumulator 14 plus 1, and in the accumulator we will have 15, and then reduce will return the accumulator. So 15 in this case. It starts from an array and reduce the value in an array, combine together the elements in an array one at a time to create a new value, in this case a sum. Here you have a multiplication. And the initial number is one, why? Why the initial number, the initial value here is number, is one? If you want to calculate the product of all the value, why is one the initial number and not zero? Yeah, because if you do something multiplied zero, we get one. So is, is we are not going to, to the goal to, to having the product of all the value. So the first round will be one multiplied by five, and then five is in the accumulator. Then five multiplied by four, and the results in the accumulator, etc. Yeah. Yes, the initial value is optional, uh, like here. If you don't have the initial value, you get the first element of the uh, array as initial value. So in this case, we will have 5 multiplied by 5 that, again, with this goal to calculating the product is not what you want. And also in the other for the sum because you are adding 5 twice. So it depends what you want to do. So the reduce operator will allow you to have one value as a combination, on purpose combination of the other values. So if you want, if you need, you can have an initial value to, to make what you want. If you don't care, you can skip the initial value to specify the initial value, and it will get the first element as the initial value. Mm -hmm. So in the last one, for instance, is to check uh, which is the largest value in the array. And so it combines everything until you have one value. Mm -hmm. uh, and here we don't have the initial value. 
because the first operation would be is 5 greater than 5? If yes, we will put the results in the accumulator, otherwise in the value. And then in the next iteration, we will have is 5 major than 4. And so we, yes, we do uh, an additional iteration probably, but if we don't know what is in the array, we cannot set up an uh, initial value that is surely smaller or greater than the other. So it's, it's fine in this case. So this is another example of a reduce. And so you can do actually whatever you want here. The important thing is that you re return something that, can be, that will be put in the accumulator. And so it's, it's something that you can uh, iterate on the next time. Hmm? So here, Either the accumulator will be put in the accumulator or the val will be put in the accumulator. Mm? So the results will be put in the accumulator for the next round. Mm? So the accumulator is, again, like a temporary variable that store the accumulated, the, the results of the operation so far. Mm? Mm? Okay, so this is a reduce that is a little bit more tricky than, than the other ones. And here, mm, clearly, as before, accumulator and current value are you know, the default names, but you can, if you prefer to have um, average and uh, mm, value, it's fine. If you help you to remember that you are computing the average in the accumulator, for instance, or sum. Mm. So these are clear names, temporary names, that is on in the definition. Uh, well, the, here there is a, a picture. Uh, Sorry, you, we can't? You can calculate uh, um, the, the nominator of the average using reduce, the sum, not the full, yes, clearly. Um, okay, this is, well, a uh, picture uh, elements of the of the elements mm, uh, in which you see filter. If you filter for a square, you get all the square element. Uh, fill, well, this, here there are other elements that are not uh, only uh, functional, but also the, the function one. These are just array methods. Uh, and reduce is clearly something strange because you, you, it's, it's, a, it's a combination of the square in some way. Mm. Um, but this is a quick look. And so here, for instance, we have an example uh, of using chaining some of these methods. Mm? So here we have uh, prices of uh, cars stored in that array of objects. And here we would like to compute the average. Mm? And we use uh, so a filter to get only the elements that are assumed. And then we use map to have the array with just the price. Hmm? So first of all, we have the first operation. We filter. We will, would like to calculate the average price of this sub. Hmm? So the things that are sub. So first here, 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 and here. We don't care about the others. Hmm? So the first operation is filter. It will filter just for the sub. We remove, we'll, we'll create a new array with just the other, the sub elements and ignore the other ones. Then on this, we are going to create an array that is big as the original array, but just with the price of the sub. Because we need to calculate the average, so we don't really care about the name, the model, etc. We want to calculate the average price. So we're keeping with, with us a big array with object when we just need the price. So map in this case is used to create a new array with just the price. So an operation is just more uh, cutting the object into the array and then use the reduce. Hmm? In which actually you, we calculate an average on the reduce in this way because the reduce is also the, the array length. Uh, so we can also do this. And so uh, step by step um, and then sum the, the results. But we can also do it uh, just the denominator, mm? um, starting from zero. Mm? And so 
in the end on the array with price we can calculate the average and then we can print the average so this is chaining we we starting from the vehicle array and we chain three functional methods each of them return uh, an array that will be applied to, to the other one Yes. Yes, that, that zero is the initial value. Yeah. So it will be zero plus 24,045 um, divided the one, two, three, four, five, uh, divided by five, and then, so it, it, it's an average calculated as smaller averages to get a sum of smaller averages but we, we could have also close the parentheses here uh, without this array length and then after the reduce do, does the um, divided array length so calculate just the denominator and then doing the, the the division at the end just at the end okay Sorry. Oh, okay. In, in the reduce, like all the others, you have, uh, well, in the others, we have one parameter that is mandatory, that is the current value. And then you can have two optional parameters the index, the current index of the array, and the full array. And here in the reduce, it's the same. You have the accumulator, the current value, and then you can have two optional parameters that are the index of the array the current index of the array and the array itself. Mm. So here we don't use the index, clearly, because it's not written, but we need the array. A and we cannot skip that, because the third argument is the index. So we cannot skip that, so we need to report that, and that because we need the fourth one. Mm. So this is the index of the current value. So the first time will be zero, the second time will be one, etc. the index. Uh, no, because you get a number from out from the reduce. And the reduce operates on arrays, so you cannot immediately chain or reduce to reduce. You can put many results of an reduce in an array and then apply a reduce to that array, but you need an array to, to use these operators. And filters and maps works because they, by default, give you an array. Let's go back here. Now. How to find will change if we use a functional method of the array. With filter, so yeah, exactly what we are going to, to write. Uh, no, we don't need to create another array because filter returns a new array. So it's already done, that part. So return, we need to return something from find. So for sure we start, need to start with the return. Uh, this dot list dot uh, uh, filter. Hmm? Then the current value, we can call it course, so that we remember that we are iterating on courses. And equals equals code. And we have done, or we are missing something.
exactly. We need, because filter returns an array. We are finding one exam. So either this exam is found, and so we can return the single exam that is found. So here we cannot have a find that returns more than one element by, by design. The finds returns the exam that is found. So zero. And you see, we replace this three, four line with just one. Filter for courses where the course code is equal to the code passed in the parameter, in the argument. will give us an error I suppose uh, but we can try you know so le let's try if this this work how this work mm? so this is uh, valid because we can find um, something that exists so you see we we see the object as expected uh, so let's put here something that is clearly not uh, a course code because it's try to extract the element from an empty array and so the result is undefined and so the behavior is the one that we set up before now clearly it doesn't return an exam because that doesn't exist good um, okay then what else uh, after date mm, so after date returns an exam list with a subset of exams after a given date. So I would like to get all the exam after that I took after tomorrow, not the one before, from today downwards. Hmm? So what we write here, this after date, Um, and here we need a date what we're going to use among the functional methods still filter yes because we need all the exam after a date so we need to filter the list from the exam after a certain date so return this dot list dot filter as before um, course then here we need the condition for filtering course dot date dot is after uh, date exactly the same is after methods we used before Yes, is it clear? So let's do the last one, the average. Hmm? So this dot average, and here return this dot list dot reduce we can use the reduce in this way and we, let's let's do the average the, the, the normal way so just calculate the nominate the nominator and then divide in the end so reduce the first value is the accumulator and we can call it uh, average or sum or sum let's say sum just to, to remember and the current element is always the course and oops 
And here, what we, we need to do to compute the denominator for, uh, for the average. Uh, dot uh, score and also here we are ignoring for the moment the lode just use 30 as 30 and zero because this, the initial element should be zero otherwise we are counting an exam twice the first exam twice whatever it is and then we can do divided this dot list dot length So the results of a reduce, that is the sum, redu divided by the length of the list, so the average. And then we return the number that represents this. Oh, list by date, no, it's fine, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so the reduction give you 200 and then we made 200 mm, divided by 2 no we're not 200 here because we're just to the exam but like 60 and divided by 2 and so the average is 30 okay so this, this complete mm, actually this, this full exercise uh, so we, we cannot do the add in a functional way um, and, and, and the others are sorting, so we cannot do the others in, in a functional way because we, we need to sort them. So we can maybe use some functional methods to s and, and then generate a sorting, but we already have the sorting methods doing that. Mm. Uh, so we're re-implementing the algorithm for, for using so the functional methods. Mm. Okay? I will put this uh, on GitHub soon after the the class, clearly. Hmm? Okay. So these last 50 minutes are beginning of introducing asynchronous programming. Hmm? Uh, so I in the lab on Thursday, uh, you will have two or three exercises. Uh, the first one will be on basic JavaScript things, sum, multiplication, array, iteration, etc. And uh, the, the latter, the second or the third, on the second or the third, I don't remember exactly now, uh, it will be on functional programming. And so exercise to do something in which you can use these functional programming methods as a practice. Mm? So this is what we, is going to happen in two days. All this part about the synchronicity will not be in the lab of this week, but uh, next week, mm? uh, when we can do something more. Mm? So asynchronicity. Uh, let me start with just the, 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 the introduction and the definition. Um, so asynchronicity in JavaScript is complicated because JavaScript is by design and by construction single threaded. It just has a single thread moving on. And so is synchronous by definition. Uh, so you cannot have two processes parallel, two threads in parallel in JavaScript. You, you, can have, you always have one that is JavaScript, the thread of JavaScript. Um, so you cannot in JavaScript have code running in parallel for how the, the, the language and the environment is designed. But yet we have synchroni asynchronicity in JavaScript uh, because they found a way to have asynchronicity in JavaScript. But don't forget that it's always, JavaScript is by design synchronous. Mm. Uh, there is no things like threads uh, because it's not in, in the language, not in the environment. And to create a synchronous code, callbacks are uh, the fundamental elements mm, for writing a synchronous code. 
Um, so the question here is if JavaScript is synchronous, so it operates one line after the others, always, and waits for the end of an operation before even starting the, the other one, how we can have things like this? So things like this in the example is a timeout. Let's say after 2,000 seconds, do some task. So wait two seconds, the 2,000 milliseconds. So wait two seconds and then do something. How can we wait two seconds and in the, in the meantime do other things if this is asynchronous? Hmm? So this is actually not because of the language, because the language is not. It's thanks to the environment. So thanks to the browser as an environment in which JavaScript run, and thanks to Node as the environment at JavaScript run. So if you remember, we have said that JavaScript as is a standard, as a way of working uh, when you run, a when run the code, and it has some methods that are proper of the language. And then we have other things that are proper to the execution environment like a method for opening files on a computer is proper of the Node.js execution environment because on a browser you cannot open directly a, a, a file on, uh, on the operating system. Getting input from a keyboard on a console, on a terminal, is something that is present in the Node.js uh, environment, not in the browser because you, in the browser you don't have a terminal, you don't have a command prompt in the browser, you have a web page. So you can get information from the web page, but not from a console. So these are things that are proper, that are that JavaScript has from the execution environment, from the browser, from the execution environment in the browser, and from the execution environment in Node. And also this concept of a synchronous, that is the same for the browser and for Node, and so they are not different, but they are in the execution environment, and this concept is linked to the concept of the event loop hmm, for making all these asynchronous things working. Hmm. And uh, I, let me see where, where it is, is after uh, the event loop. Uh, but for, for now, hmm, trust me that JavaScript is synchronous and there is some mechanism in the execution environment, not within the language but the execution environment that allow us to have some sort of a synchronicity. And we will see, for instance, that this one, the set them out that after two seconds execute uh, uh, something, does something, is most of the time not done after two seconds. It's around two seconds, more or less. It depends on what is doing JavaScript. So sometimes maybe it's two seconds, sometimes it will be three sometimes 2.5. It depends on the other things that you're doing JavaScript because this is not a pure asynchronicity. It's just a moment in which the main thread stops and this is executed and then the main thread restart. And this simulate the behavior of asynchronous because this will be eventually uh, executed after more or less two seconds. And this is linked to the concept of the event loop that we are going to see. Uh, but why a synchronous code? A synchronous code is very, very popular in JavaScript so that it, it creates also uh, one thing that we are going to see next time that is called the callback hell. Like hell, the, the, the place where bad people go. Um, that one. Um, and, and sorry for the, the definition, not very professional. Um, so it's called the callback hell, because to enable a synchronicity, you use callback, and then at a certain point, you have a callback that calls a callback, and it calls a callback, and it calls a callback, and you have this long list of callbacks, one after the others, that generate this callback hand, uh, hell, and actually the language solved that. And so we, we are going to see a little bit of this callback hell, but then we are also going to see one way to avoid that, with new features in the language. But so it, it was, it's, it's important, a synchronous language, a synchronous uh, code, and it's important also callback. Uh, why? Think about web development. So if you have a web application that runs a chunk of code for three seconds, so you have a web page, and then you have a JavaScript code that does some calculation. 
uh, or better, you have to log in on a web page. So you write username and password, you press uh, submit, and these username and password are sent to a server that will check on the database if the username is valid, if the password is valid, and either give you access or give you an error, etc. All these things, hmm, if it's done not in a synchronous way, will mean that you press submit and you wait. And you cannot do anything on the web page because they're waiting for the answer from the server. And so if the server is very, very fast, etc., it's fine. Maybe you wait very, very few, a very, very little time. But if the, if the server maybe is, 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 is low, because it's very, very high loaded, or the, the internet connection is low, is incredibly low, etc., you have waiting. Maybe one second, maybe two seconds. And that one, two second, the person that is using the browser cannot do anything on the application. And one, two seconds for, say, a, a user of a web application, it's, it's a lot of time. So one, two. In this moment, you cannot, if you click, you don't do anything. It seems it's, freeze, it's frozen. And so you say, it's, 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 uh, it's broken. Uh, but, but it's not, it's just waiting for the answer from a server to give you the possibility to do the other option. So this is something that we don't want to have. Hmm? And we don't have in the web, in the browser. So if you log in, but you click somewhere in another moment while logging in, you abort that, that command and you do something else. If you, while, if you log in and then open and close an accordion, you, you can do that. If there is an animation on the page, the animation continues to work while you are waiting for the login to complete, even that one second that you wait. Mm? Uh, and so this is all asynchronous. Mm? It delegates to another part, say, okay, I, I would like to have this information. Then when it's back, tell me. Mm? And so we can actually do this thing in parallel. Mm? Uh, or imagine also by inputting data from a keyword. So if you are inputting data from a keyword without a synchronous code, you cannot do anything else in the web page. So if you're compiling a form, you cannot click anywhere. The page will be frozen while you wait, while waiting you to inputting data. So this is not what we are used to, and it's not what we want to. Hmm? Uh, and this is happening in the browser, but also can happen outside. So you create a, a program. You open a long, a long file hmm? on disk. You are reading. Uh, encode all the slides of the course. All the slides, all courses of Polytechnical. And you, maybe you want to do other operations that are not related to that data extraction, but in a synchronous code, you cannot. You're st there, stuck, waiting for this to process. Mm? And again, you prefer to have something else. Okay, while I'm reading that, I maybe can print something on screen, or I can do other operations that are clearly not related to the data I'm going to read. So all of this is clearly uh, asynchronous. Um, and this is done in JavaScript with this uh, event loop and with some primitives that are non-blocking. Mm? So some methods, some functions that are non-blocking by definition. So uh, like the asynchronous callback, uh, independently on how they work, we have some uh, callback that are synchronous. Uh, and in JavaScript, most of the programs, especially in the web, are event-driven. So uh, something is started with an event is uh, collected, is received. Mm? So when you click on a, ma on a button on a web page, what happens is that the JavaScript the browser detects the event of clicking that button and the action associated to that button is executed. Mm? So it's event driven. The button does nothing by itself, it's not checking, oh, is someone pressing me? Is someone pressing me? Is someone pressing me? But its weight is there. And then at a certain point, it receives an event that is, I'm clicked, and then execute his behavior, its behavior. So this is a code non-blocking, so extremely important. And as I said before, we have these callbacks that are asynchronous, that are, again, great for simple things like handling button click, fetching a small document, timers, after two seconds, I'm writing you a callback that will be executed after around two seconds. Mm? And that is an asynchronous callback. It will be executed later on. Mm? And also for interfacing with database. 
all the methods mostly okay 99% of the libraries for interfacing with database in JavaScript are asynchronous hmm? so they start operation on the database but gave back control to the program if just in case the program needs to do other things while it's waiting for information on the database hmm? if if they want um, and here there is for, is for instance there is an example of a uh, red line uh, the we, we don't go in detail here but red line is for getting input from the keyboard hmm, on a Node.js program hmm. um, so notice we we never mention how to get values how to ask value to a user you can do with console log but how to get an answer with, which is your preferred number and person can write five we never had this example because all these things are asynchronous in JavaScript so we, we cannot do that before now because we, we always work with synchronous thing and if you do it in synchronous there is a red line sync what happens is that the program stops when you type on the keyboard so until you don't press enter everything is frozen in the program so if you have a timer that should elapse after two seconds it won't because the program is stopped waiting for you for your input uh, it will trigger after you press enter but if it took five minutes to press enter that event will be triggered after five minutes not after two seconds because everything is blocked hmm? uh, so here again there is an example this is a callback answer hmm? that is the the information we got from the keyboard and then we put answer in the description and then we use the description for other operation printing on screen uh, putting it in a database whatever hmm? but this is synchronous that means that if the here there is another operation that operation will be executed while waiting for that answer hmm? so here if we have here console.log uh, hello hmm? we will see how old are you and while we wait this this console.log will be executed hmm? uh, timers is another way to uh, set up a synchronous call mm? so you have timers after one second execute the console after more or less one second and also you can have um, here there is a, another example uh, you can also have a set interval not only set them out so set them out set a timer that happens once after a certain amount of time set intervals uh, execute the callback asynchronously every time that every time that specified time lapse mm? so if you say set interval every two seconds every two seconds more or less the function will be executed mm? so if the function is print hello you every two seconds you will see hello 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 with the set interval with the set them out just once after two seconds mm? uh, and notice that timeout value is cannot be longer than 24 days uh, and this is reasonable if you think that this started in a browser because you don't keep hopefully an active browser tab or windows for more than 24 days maybe you can you have but the browser at a certain point will reload the page after a while because maybe you put your computer on stop on standby etc hmm? so this timer cannot be used for oh let let's run a program and let remi remind me about this in one month because you don't have one month you have only 40 24 days for timers hmm? so for short timers it works two seconds three seconds ten seconds one minute but then you cannot exaggerate too much uh, and then there is clear interval for stopping the set interval so if you don't want to to continue to call set interval over two seconds you um, can do it with the the, the call the um, the clear interval and last thing uh, how to handle errors in callbacks uh, so there is no official way to handle errors in callbacks you have only best practices to do that 
And the practice, especially in Node.js, is to have in the callback a parameter that represents the error and a parameter, an argument, that represents the data, the valid data. So in the first, you get the error, and in the second, you get the true value. And we will see different already done callbacks that will give. So here, when you call the read file on a file, if the reading is not working, the error will be stored in the variable called error. And so you can manipulate the error to do whatever you want. Instead, if you have data, uh, if the error is null and data is, is, is full, you have actually data, you have valid values, and you can do process the data, you can print it out, you can do whatever you want on the data itself. So this is not standard, but it's a common way to handling errors in callbacks um, in JavaScript. Having this double um, callback with error and data immediately after. Okay, so this is just a strategy. Okay, next time, uh, after the lab, we will speak about database access uh, with SQLite and in particular uh, asynchronous callback. Thank you and have a nice day.